Often portrayed as ferocious meat eaters that attack anything that moves, red belly piranhas have a fearsome reputation. They are responsible for more than 200 human attacks each year, and there are three confirmed cases of human death caused by piranha attacks. They are scary stars of movies. Wednesday uses them for revenge on his brother's bullies. When the bullies are practicing water polo, she drops several dozen of them in the pool. As if red belly piranhas were not scary enough, Piranha 3D features a prehistoric piranha species that was thought to be extinct after the Ice Age, but it isn't. The fish is such a talented hunter that it finds its way to public pools and bathtubs to snatch human flesh. Though these tales and stories are horrifying, they seem a bit exaggerated because we have seen people swimming in pools swarming with piranhas. So the question is, do they hunt and eat humans? Why do we think they are so dangerous? And if they are, how can we protect ourselves from them? Piranhas are a fascinating group of carnivorous freshwater fish that belong to the family Sarasalmidae. There are over 60 different species of piranhas, and they are native to South America's warm rivers and lakes, and they mostly live in the Amazon basin. The red belly piranha, or Pigocentris nodereri, is the most recognized piranha species. They have red abdomens and a unique biology that is particularly suited to their carnivorous lifestyle. We didn't know much about piranhas until Theodore Roosevelt observed them during his famous expedition to the Amazon River. He writes in his book Through the Brazilian Wilderness that local fishermen arranged a demonstration for him. They placed a weak cow in the water of the Amazon River. Suddenly, a large school of piranhas attacked the cow, and in a feeding frenzy, they stripped the cow down to the bone in just a few minutes. After this observation, Roosevelt described piranhas as ruthless predators that can strip flesh in moments. This description engraved the piranha's fierce image into popular culture. Gradually, more stories about the dangerous red belly piranhas popped up. For example, there are tales of local farmers who use a strategic method to cross piranha-infested waters. They sacrifice a sick cow by leaving it upstream. When the piranhas attack the sick cow, they safely herd their cattle across the river. Piranhas can grow to be a little over a foot long and weigh up to four pounds. So, they are relatively small, but they have a robust and muscular build and a powerful jaw lined with sharp, triangular teeth. These teeth are one of their most distinctive features. They fit together neatly when the mouth is closed, which allows them to cut through muscle and even bone. They have strong muscles for biting and can exert an incredible force when they bite down. In fact, they have the most powerful bite force relative to their size, and they top any living animal on Earth. When you combine their agility with their formidable teeth and bite force, the result is impressive. When piranhas go for a bite, they move with incredible speed and quickly grab a piece of meat, twist it, and zoom away. All of this happens so fast that they can take a bite out of their prey in the blink of an eye. They have good eyesight, but eyesight doesn't work much in murky waters of the Amazon, so they have evolved to have excellent sense of smell and hearing ability, which are absolutely necessary for hunting. What makes them even more scary and ruthless is that they are cannibalistic, so they might eat other piranhas, especially in tough times when food is scarce. In the Amazon River, food sources can fluctuate greatly throughout the year. So, during the dry season, when the waters shrink and food becomes hard to find, piranhas may turn to cannibalism and attack and consume the wounded or smaller members of their own species. So, they have what it takes to match Roosevelt's descriptions and be the superstars of horror movies. But experts say that what Roosevelt saw in the Amazon was probably staged by fishermen, and piranhas do not usually behave that way. Piranhas typically live in large schools that include between 20 to several hundred fish, and they do it because being in a group reduces the risk of an individual piranha becoming prey to other predators. So if they are away from their school, they become very nervous. This nervousness is because piranhas are not apex predators, and numerous animals can hunt them. A study in 2005 found that they rely so much on their school that they become nervous and fearful when left alone. It is also true about aquarium-raised piranhas. They tend to hide, even during feedings. But when they are in larger groups, they become less nervous. But even though they heavily rely on their school, they don't live together for hunting. One sign that piranhas don't hunt together is the fact that literally any hunter that has fish on its menu can hunt them, and their school doesn't fight back. They are relatively vulnerable when faced with their natural predators, like river dolphins, caimans, various bird species, giant river otters, and humans. Giant otters, for example, 
can easily decimate a group of piranhas without much resistance from the fish. It's because the social structure of piranha schools does not facilitate coordinated defense or attack strategies, and each fish is only concerned with its own survival. When a predator like the giant otter attacks, if a fish responds to the attack, it becomes an easier target. So, their best course of action is to flee. The same thing happens when a large animal, like a cow, enters the water. Piranhas are very cautious, and they normally consider larger animals as a threat, not as food. So, they usually stay away or flee, and don't dare approach the large animal. Even though piranhas don't defend their school, they have a unique ability to warn their school about danger. They bark, they contract their swim bladder, and produce this sound. So if you are in the Amazon River and hear piranha sounds, be aware that they might warn you about approaching their feeding or breeding grounds, or they are alerting their school about a potential danger. Now that we know they don't hunt in groups, the question is, how do they hunt? Piranhas are not active hunters. They are opportunistic feeders, and instead of hunting down prey, they eat when there is an opportunity. So, a good portion of their diet consists of fins that they nip from the tails of larger fish and bits of flesh. Also, they eat whole small fish, insects, invertebrates, and occasionally ripe fruits like figs. We know that they don't hunt together, so the concept of a feeding frenzy is exceptionally rare and typically only happens under extreme conditions, like when they find particularly easy meals, such as dying prey, or leftovers from other predators feeding. A feeding frenzy is extremely dangerous for piranhas because they could become food for other piranhas or larger predators. We know this because many piranhas have bite marks from other piranhas on their fins, which mostly happens during feeding frenzies. So, they avoid a feeding frenzy unless there is food scarcity and they are hungry. When there is an opportunity for these hungry piranhas, like when people throw dead carcasses into the river to film their behavior, at first, a few piranhas will cautiously bite into the prey. If the prey doesn't fight back, there will be gradually more and more piranhas, and the sound of movements of these piranhas attracts other piranhas and starts a feeding frenzy. Piranhas show remarkable maneuverability in a food frenzy. They have powerful tail fins and can execute quick turns and swift darts away from danger. So, after they snatch a piece of meat, they quickly escape from the scene and move to open room for other piranhas. But this move is very important and is their defensive tactic and protects them from their cannibalistic friends snatching their tails. Even though piranhas are not aggressive, most of us are curious about if they would attack humans. And if they do, are these attacks fatal? The answer is yes, piranhas attack humans. And there are three documented incidents of humans that were eaten by piranha schools. For example, and very sadly, in 2015, a girl in Brazil was partially eaten by piranhas after her boat capsized. But the problem with reports of such incidents is that they come out right after an incident and flood the media. For the specific Brazilian girl case, coroner's reports concluded that the bites occurred after the victim was already drowned. But the report did not receive much attention from the media because they were busy talking about the next big event. So the incident was portrayed as if piranhas hunted and ate a human alive. For the two other cases of schools of piranhas eating people, those two were also already dead from other causes, and then piranhas attacked them. Even though we do not have any other documented cases of piranhas hunting people, there are many tales of people eaten whole by schools of piranhas. Now the question is, are they real incidents? Can you get piranhas to strip a human down to their bones in a feeding frenzy like what happened to the British spy in the James Bond movies of You Only Live Twice? With all that I said in this video, the truth is, you probably won't get eaten by these fish. But what would happen if you made a group of piranhas very hungry? You would need about 300 to 500 of them to eat a whole person. They could do it quickly, in about 5 minutes, because of their feeding method. Dr. Herbert Axelrod wanted to get to the bottom of this once and for all. So, he decided to experiment on himself because, apparently, he had trouble finding volunteers. So he stepped into a pool filled with aggressive red-bellied piranhas that were kept hungry for days. Everyone was surprised because the piranhas didn't bite him at all. Jeremy Wade repeated a similar experiment, and again, piranhas didn't hurt him. Coyote Peterson also did an experiment and put his hands in a tank with several hungry piranhas, and nothing happened to him. 
So he holds a fish fillet in his hand and tries to lure the piranhas to eat it. But piranhas don't take even a bite. In fact, in his experiment, piranhas try to stay in a corner away from his hand and fish fillet. With these experiment results, researchers say that piranhas aren't the scary monsters of the water. They prefer smaller snacks like tiny fish and worms and don't usually go after big live animals. But if piranhas do not hunt humans, why do we have around 200 piranha attack reports every year? These reports are all about piranhas attacking those who swim in lakes and rivers of South America. Well, there are three types of attack. The first happens during the dry season, when water levels are low and food sources become scarce. So, piranhas become very protective of their territory and bite people to keep them out. The second type of attack is when someone stirs the water or thrashes around. This movement is very dangerous because it mimics a distressed animal and triggers a feeding frenzy response from piranhas. But the third case, which is the most common piranha attack type, happens when humans invade their spawning grounds. During the breeding season, some piranha species build nests and lay eggs. Then, they guard their eggs and child aggressively, and if humans approach them, they get a warning bite. Though there are so many reports of piranha attacks every year, these attacks are mostly limited to one single bite. And most bites result in minor wounds, such as nips to the toes or fingers. But if you want to swim safely in South America's rivers and lakes, pay attention to warning signs installed by the government. Overall, I believe that piranhas are not the demons that the media portray. They are hunters with excellent adaptation to their natural environment, and humans must respect their boundaries. Now that you have watched the video about a fearsome predator till the end, I am sure that you will love my video that talks about human-eating sharks. Click here to watch it. Also, if you liked my research and the work I put into this video, please support me by liking and subscribing.